scatter chart takes your data and puts it as dots on a graph and lets you see what the relationship is. You might want to use a scatter chart if you have two sets of data and you want to see the relationship between the two. You don't want to use it if you have more than two sets of data. If you have three sets of data, you should probably consider a bubble chart. But if you have two and you're looking to see how they affect each other, you're looking to see what the correlation is, in other words, scatter chart could be the right thing for you. So you're looking at a simple one that I created. And if I move my mouse over it, you can easily manipulate it. Or manipulate it, that sounds weird. If I move my mouse over it, you can customize it. So these things never seem to be labeled right, right? So if I want to change the title, just hover over the title, right click, edit title, that easy. If you want to change the labels, this is the Y axis, you want to change that, hover over it, right click, same thing on the X. If you think there's too much noise in here, one of the easy solutions would be just to make it a little bit bigger. But also, if for some strange reason you think you want to change the size of the dots or the colors of the dots, just hover over one of them, left click, and you can control that to make them smaller. Also, you see that there's a line in here. This line is the mathematical trend line that it calculated for you. And it helps you predict, right? So if you have a Y value of 33, this line is telling you it's probably going to be about 130 on the X. You can control that trend line and whether or not it's a line or an exponential or a polynomial curve by customizing the graph. Uh, so let's look at how I set these trend line values. I'm going to use a little drop down in the upper right. That'll get you to advanced edit. Bring up a menu. Stay on the customization ribbon. And these are a lot of the values that we could just set on the face of the chart. That's easier to use your mouse. But for some of the more advanced options, you want to be in here. We'll scroll down to the trend line. And we chose a linear one. That's what we're showing right now. I'll show you what happens if we change it to an exponential. If you harken back to your calculus days or your trigonometry days. I don't remember which one it was in. It's a few years ago. It tries to fit a curve in there. That correlation is 0.492. If you go back to linear, it was 0.494. The higher the correlation the better a fit it is for your data. If you keep this line as linear, it fits the data a little bit better. If you want to show the correlation, I have it on right now, it's R squared. You want to have that clicked. That's your correlation. If it's not to a mathematical audience, you might want to leave that out, just be distracting. The other thing is that all the other, the other part of the calculation there can be hidden as well. In between those those settings, you can get a pretty nice representation, I think, of your data and where it lies. So click Update. We went through those settings. I don't think we really changed anything because we decided we like it the way it is. All right, let's kick this party up a notch. Here's another set of data that doesn't have nearly as much in it, and it's not as pretty of a relationship either. But first, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on the chart. So if I look at this, some of the things that I think at least are, one, the dots are too small. So I just left clicked here. And I'm going to make them seven pixels. Uh-huh, joke's on me, I guess they're already seven pixels. Let's try 14. Okay, to me that looks better, so let's do that. I don't know if I'm just looking at the chart and I don't see the data underneath, I don't know what this means. This one is number of ice cubes, right? Come over to the left-hand side where it's empty. I left click, and I'm going to choose the left vertical axis title. Ice cubes. Okay, so this is how many ice cubes you want in your beverage. And as it gets warmer, you want more. Let's explain that right click that this is 
temperature. And you hit enter. There's there's your two labels. Oh, ice cubs. I don't know how refreshing that would be. And what you're typically doing with these charts is you're looking for a relationship. And again, I think it's nice to put a line in it. So I'm going to left click on one of these dots, not right click. I'm going to drop down this trend line box and let's try linear. Yeah, that looks like it's pretty helpful, right? There's a good correlation there, but let's just to see, let's try an exponential because maybe the hotter it gets, you want even more ice. I think that looks like it fits a little bit tighter. Let's leave that trend line for data one series is pretty robotic sounding. So let's go into the advanced edit and let's give that a label. So we'll go down the trend line. And then we'll just call it the trend. So this is super helpful, right? If you're someone who prepares a water professionally and you want to maximize your time and the amount of ice that you use. So you can check the temperature before you decide how many ice cubes go in each glass of water. I think I'll probably patent this process. It's pretty complicated. So that's a more simple scatter chart. And I just use that to show you an exponential relationship and having the graph be a little bit smaller. Let's look at a relationship quickly that has a perfect correlation. This correlation be a value of one. If I put the value of R2 on here, the size of your shoe. So the left shoe predicts the size of the right shoe. Almost always does. I'm sure you probably have a second cousin, right? That has two different sizes of feet, but this illustration is pretty good for just showing what perfect correlation is one to one lower left to upper right. This is an example of a negative perfect correlation, negative one, the amount of heat needed as the temperature rises will go down. Hypothetically, it may be a straight line in the real world. Would this be a straight line? I don't know, but in my little Google sheets example, I made it be one so that you could see what a negative one correlation was. The last thing with scatter charts that I want to show you is doing error bars. The chart that we're looking at right now has a trend line, which is a common way to show the trend, but another way that you can do it that may be helpful for whatever you're doing is to show it as error bars. A lot of the options you can access and change by left clicking here. You can change the trend line that way, but you can't do error bars, but I'm going to take the trend line off for now left click, remove it. Then we'll have to go up to advanced edit again. Stay on the customize tab and we'll go down near the bottom and you see error bars right now. We have none. Let's put them on. You can do them as a constant value or a percentage. Let's do constant. Keep it easy. And these are way too big. This doesn't follow the trend at all. I don't think you're going to want to have it a smaller range. So let's just change it to, from 10 to let's try two. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit too big, but maybe this is how big your variation is. So this is sending a different message. Just saying your data is probably going to lie somewhere in between these two error bars. It's not saying, well, I'm going to show you the average and it's most likely going to be right there. This is more showing you the distribution of where it could be. If you try to do this on a chart that has too many dots, you can't see the error bars and it just looks like a mess. But if you don't have very many dots like this chart right here, I think it's a good option. So that's really all the major settings for scatter charts. You can go in and you can customize all the rest. Lots of different ways to do it, but these are the major item. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.